Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel and welcome to another Friday night pen thoughts and today it is episode number nine and let's write also the date in Portuguese so this is Lisboa 14 de Maio de 2021 and so once again welcome to this video I'm recording this quite late so by the time you'll be seeing this I'm not sure if it will be the usual time because it is usually uh, midnight and 15 Lisbon time and now it is already uh, 9 15 p.m. so I don't have much time to record it all edit upload have the verifications from YouTube and then schedule the premiere so who knows when this will be out but I didn't want to miss this video today so here we are and for today's video I don't think I will make it very long we never know but I will just show you the pens that I'm using for today's video to follow the same structure as the other videos the other Friday night pen thoughts videos that I make so for today I'm using this pen and also this one so let me present them to you this you already saw in some other videos this is the Lamy Safari original uh, Terra it's big name and sometimes I forget about it and it has a fine steel nib that you already know and it has inside uh, an ink that I didn't use yet it is the uh, sorry it is the great fountain which is the name of the brand mystery brown and it is a light brown ink it is not a terracotta but it almost matches the color of the pen so I thought it would be a nice combo by the way I will review this ink very soon it is uh, produced by my Italian friend Gabriel Falcinelli and so this will be a review soon the other pen I'll be using during this video is this one that I showed you and it is a very beautiful pen in a very beautiful color I really really like it and this is the Lamy Ion Dark Green a, met a metal pen that is very very nice it has a similar nib but not the same kind of nib let's forget when it's black and the other one is uh, silver colored they are interchangeable but um, this one is more rounded and this one is well this is the Lamy Safari style this this looks a little bit more retro there are some German pens from the maybe the 70s that have this kind of nib and this also has a fine steel nib and the ink it has inside is the diamine or diamine inkvent calendar from 2019 and the color is called mistletoe I'm quite excited because diamine or diamine uh, already announced they will be releasing a new uh, inkvent calendar for this year so I'm quite curious to see what is what they are going to do how they are keeping the same Christmas theme and to make different things from what they made so far so I'm quite curious about that 
and I really want to, to, to see it. Uh, the, other, the, the other calendar, they called it the blue edition, and now this is the red edition, and I'm really, really curious to see. And I like the inkvent idea, because what happens is that you get very small bottles, like ink samples, and you just try the inks, and if you like, you can buy them. So, I only have one full, not a full anymore, but I only have one bottle, one full-sized bottle of the ink vent from last year. Last year, at least. Actually, I have two, because the, the, the ink from the last day of the calendar had a, a regular-sized 30 milliliter bottle from Diamine, so... This one came in the calendar, but besides that, I only bought one color that is called Solstice, which is a very nice color with some... Um, uh, okay, I forgot. It, had, it has the sparkles. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I can't remember. Okay, but they are pen, uh, inks with sh uh, shimmer. That's it. Uh, it's a shimmering ink. And I really like it. I think it's the only shimmering ink that I really enjoy. So I have it because a viewer from Portugal decided to give me that ink because when I reviewed all the inks from the calendar, she, she heard me saying that it was my favorite color of the whole group and she gave me a bottle. So this is very, very nice. And I think I will review the whole calendar again if I can buy it with some time before so I can post one review each day which is a lot of work but I think it's fun it's fun for me and I think it's fun for you although making ink reviews is not that fun so it's not fun because of the ink review it's fun because of the process it's really fun to have that kind of excitement to open it, to, to have to do all everything with lots of organization, which is something that I am not. I'm not organized at all. So that will take that will require some effort from me, but I, sometimes I enjoy to, to feel that I'm able to keep up with that uh, that expectation that I create on myself. So, okay, enough rambling now. Uh, about the, the topics that I talk about usually on these videos. First, the recent videos since last Friday night spend thoughts. I only made uh, three videos, which was um, an unboxing from pens that I received from Apple Boom. I made the Versus from Mumblan 149 versus Senator President. And yesterday I posted the video of pens for May 2021. So this is what I made last week. Not lots of videos, but that's what was possible. Now. The videos that I'm planning to make uh, next week, I'm not sure. I I I've, I will have um, I'll have quite a busy week, so I cannot promise a lot. Um, so what I'll try to do is something that I already promised you before, which is the review of the Lamy Safari. So Safari. Terra Red review. This is one video that I want to make. The other video that I want to make also is the review of this little pen. And this is the Caveco Collection Vibrant Violet. This is a pen that I already have, because Caveco sent it to me for review. It will be released only in the 17th May, so we are just a few days away, and I want to post the review the day it will be released, so uh, for people to have some 
color comparisons and to decide if they want to buy this special edition from Kavec. So this is kind of my promises for next week. And of course, I also want to make the next week's Friday night pen thoughts. My handwriting is each day worse. So this is, these are my plans. I cannot promise more than three videos next week. And let's see, I think I will receive a pilot pen, I guess. So maybe there will be one unboxing and I think I have four pens in the way to me. So who knows when they will arrive. So this is the, about the videos. Another thing that I always like to talk about is the pens that I received since last Friday Night Pen Thought video. So, since last video, I received two pens. They are they came as a loan and they came from Apple Boom. So, recent pens. I'm writing these just because you can see something besides an empty burlap background, but also because this allows me to align my ideas and to be able to fill up the description of the video, to put timestamps and to know, to have a record of what I talk during the different Friday Night Pen Thoughts. So that's why I jot the, these down. And the, about those recent pens, I got two from Apple Boom, as I was saying, they are both for, they are both as a loan, and I got these, this is the, one of the pens for today, this is the Lamy Ion in dark green, it is a special edition for 2021, it's a very beautiful color, it has this very nice clip, and I think this is a very interesting evolution from I dare to say from the Lamy CP1, because I would say the if you look at a, a, a Lamy 2000 and to a Lamy CP1, you can see there are some common elements, and I think the CP1 came from that, and then recently they decided to make a much girthier and more solid fountain pen based on the overall design of the CP1. So uh, if you ask me, I think this is based or inspired on CP1. Maybe this is not the official story, but that's how I that's how I feel about it. So this is just my opinion, not a fact. The other pen that I received also from Apple Boom is this one. It is not inked yet. And this is the Lamy Dialogue in matte black. And, oops, the wrong way. I'm not used, it's not inked, so I'm not used to it yet. It has the same kind of nib as the Safari, but a gold nib, and it has a retractable nib. So these will be reviewed someday soon. I'm not still, I'm still not used to this uh, mechanism, but I think it is a nice girthy pen that I, I'm quite interested in in review soon. So these were the two pens that I received as a loan. These will be sent back and I guess I will buy this one from Apple Boom. Now, I always talk about something that I find very interesting, which is the Uncommon pen of the day. And for today, we will have an Italian pen. And this Italian pen is called Marlon Aureus, or Aureus, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Silver. And it is a fun pen that I bought a couple of years ago. I already made a review, but it was quite long, so I, maybe many of you never saw that. Um, 
but I want to show you the pen because it is really an interesting pen and uncommon. This is an Italian pen that is a special edition and a limited edition. So this is a very expensive pen. If you ask me, I'm not sure how much it costs. I will try to put an eBay link below if I have the time to edit all these before the time to post. And I will put there the, the description. Um, and it is a limited edition, I think from the year 2000 or 2002, I do not remember it anymore. And you have here the, it says there, Marlon Aureus, and mine is the 171 from 810 uh, units. So, this pen has some interesting features. It is very expensive, I was telling you, I'm not sure if it goes for around 800 euros or something like that. I bought it much cheaper. And why? Because it had two problems. The filling mechanism was not working and also the, the, the pen has a, a problem with it. The pen is made of celluloid and celluloid is a material that is quite sensitive to some external agents and someday in the history of this pen it must have been subject to uh, to heat and you can see that the pen is warped there this part goes like this so the pen has this defect and it is very visible so this is a problem with the pen and it takes value from it. So I bought it very inexpensively and I'm very happy with the pen. I need a, fortunately I found a pen repair person here in Portugal that could uh, replace the sack inside because it was not easy and now the pen is working. So. It is a nice pen, it's not inked right now, but I think I need to ink it again. So let me just show it to you. It has some silver parts there, like the clip with those rivets, all this part with a Greek column. The, the it, it has a, a very interesting idea, this pen. Let me show you here. This is um this is the face of uh, a Roman emperor, which I think it's called in regular name Pertinax, and he made, he created um, in the Roman Empire, he created a, a coin that was a common coin for all the Roman Empire. So it's like the, what the Euro coin is today. So they decided to make a copy of the coin and put it here on the top of the of the cap and they made these in three different editions the gold the silver and the bronze this is the silver it is interesting it has a roman column there uh, it has a very beautiful celluloid in stripes and see the chatoyance of the celluloid it is very subtle but it is an amazing color because the background is very bright it doesn't show well but you see, this pen is really, really beautiful. That's a shame it is warped, but it was the way that I could get one. Otherwise, I would never have one of those. It unscrews and then it reveals this. Focus, please. This Marlin Italy 18 karat gold nib which is quite nice. Then it has a very, one of those cheap feeds and it slides right off. And this pen, I think it is the uncommon pen of the day because it is a special edition, it's not a common pen that you see every day and because it is kind of a lever filler pen. But where is the lever? It's not here. So it is something that used to be done in the past and was called a coin filler. And I had, I think, for this video, somewhere I have here, one pen that is a lever filler. This is a Cow 
fountain pen vintage one. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is not very well today. And you, when you raise this lever, it would compress a sack that is inside and would create a vacuum and uh, pull the ink inside. When you do this, it's easy to leave it like that or may maybe like that. And there, sometimes there were accidents. If you are going to put it in your pocket, it could catch the fabric. And if it would raise, then lots of ink would be uh, out of the nib into the cap. And when you uncap the pen, you would have ink all around. So this is how these pens worked. And they considered this to be a potential risk. So, some brands made something that was like a, a match, match stick filler with the, which had just a hole, a little hole and you put the match there and pressed it. And this one was a coin filler. So you grab a coin, you insert the coin inside this uh, slot and will compress the sack. This pen, because it has this, it is this special edition, it comes in a very beautiful box and so on, but I show that on the review, you can watch it. It comes with a replica of that coin, of that Roman coin. And so you will use that silver coin to do this and compress the sack. So you put the pen into the ink, you do this a couple of times, you remove it and then you can use the pen and then cap it and put it in your pocket and it will not catch any fabric and will avoid accidents. So this is kind of a clever idea and it is much more interesting because we are talking about the pen that is I think or from the last year of 20th century or from the first years of the 21st century and it still is a coin filler. It's not common at all. It's not even common to see a lever filler today and this kind of pen is even more uncommon. So, but you can see it warped so you can never put the pen upright because it falls. Um, and you can see this silver insert because it is bent. It raised a little bit but it works it is fine and it is the only way that i as i told you i can afford this pen and now that i'm talking about it and i'm using it i think it it, it, it has a very good size i think i need to ink this pen but i already have 43 pens with ink right now so it's wise not to do it, or otherwise I will not be able to manage it. Let's go for the last two topics of today. And the first topic is about filling systems. Which is your favorite filling system? This is a question that I would like you to answer in the comments because it's something that interests me. And actually, I remembered of the topic because I chose these as the unusual pen for the video. And then I reminded, okay, a coin filler. How often do you see something like that? So, I would put the filling systems in two, four different kinds, I guess. I did not write this down, so I'm thinking as I'm, as I'm talking. One kind of filling system is like this, like this Divine Design pen that I already reviewed. It is an interesting German pen that's very simple, kind of Parker Dufold type uh, um, looks. And this pen is made to be eyedropper, so it is called Divine Design Eyedropper. That's the name of the pen. However, it can take uh, cartridges, but it was made to be eyedropper, so you can... I would say one of the filling systems, one of the types is the... Uh, let's call it a passive filling system. It's a filling system that you don't use anything to fill the pen by itself. You need to put ink inside the pen and the pen is just a, 
is just there receiving the ink. So it is very passive, it's not really a feeling system, it's, it's the way you feel the pen. I think it's a little different. So you have that, where the pen is just a reservoir and you just put ink inside, but not really an active system. Then you have the systems that need an ink sac and for those you have the coin filler, for example, you have the lever filler, you have the crescent filler, um, you have the, the button filler, like these vintage Parker Senior Dufault, where you need to press this little button, the button filler, and you also have the... where is it? I have, <laughs> I have so many pens here that I'm, I get a little bit lost. Another Parker to fold, but the British to fold, or the English to fold, where you have the vac uh, aerometric system. So, this is one that you have a sack that has the filling system. So, um, two types, the just the eyedropper, the one with a filling uh, a rubber sack that holds the ink inside, then you have a third kind of filling system and within this there, is lo there are lots of variations and I'm talking about, for example, the, um, the Pelican, beautiful pen, the Pelican M800. I will leave links below and there will be also um, the the coupon to have 10% off at Apple Boom, so I'll put links there. Um, and it is for Apple Boom because Apple Boom is my uh, kind of sponsor in these videos, but if they don't have the pen, I will link to some place else if I can. So this is a piston filler, so it has a moving part that fills the, that pushes the pen inside and the pen is contained in the, the ink is contained in the barrel itself. It happens with these. It happens with the Parker Vacuumatic where you also have the reservoir is the barrel itself. You just have a little mechanism that draws the ink and you also have this kind of filling system. For example, in the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age, this is a very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pen. Uh, where you have the, this is the vacuum filler, they call it power filler, but it's the same thing, you have a mechanism that will draw ink inside this barrel, but the barrel itself is the container, but with an active filling system. But, <coughs> sorry, but as you can imagine, there are lots of variations between these, the piston filler, will last for much longer the mechanism than the rubber part on the vacuumatic. But when you answer you can specify more, but I'm just putting these in four different main groups. Then there is another group that I will not consider for this. You can talk about it, but it's like it's a group so for it um, it's there by its own, so it doesn't even make that much sense to talk about, I think. Which is the Parker, I don't have it here, the Parker capillary filling they made for the Parker 61. Which just has a capillary filling, you put it in the ink and it will, it will absorb the ink. It is, I think it was just made for the Parker 61, no other brand made it, so it's kind of a really different filling system. If you want to um, choose that as your favorite, please do it, but I will not consider it um, a class of filling systems because it was uh, like a very isolated um, exercise of one specific brand. And finally, we have the... this is the Parker Centennial Full Big Red, this is the modern one, you have the final filling system, which is the cartridge pen, which means that the pen will not contain ink and the pen will not suck ink from the 
ink bottle you just pick up one cartridge like that for example you put the cartridge inside the the pen and you will suck the ink you you'll not suck ink to the pen you'll just provide the ink container with the pen into the pen however if you want you can get a converter and use the convert as if it was this but it is always a smaller ink capacity because you're not using the whole barrel as a container but just this so uh, i would consider the converter a nice thing but actually the converter only exists because at some time the decision was to make little containers called cartridges to put ink directly into the pen. So, these are the four main, I would say, uh, types of filling systems and I would like you to tell me which is your favorite. If you ask me, the one that I like the least is this, the eyedropper. I hate to eyedropper pens. I already did it for the channel, but I don't really like to do it. And my favorite filling system ever is the cartridge or converter system. I like to fill my cartridges with a syringe from the bottle and use the ink on the pen, just like that. It's my favorite filling system, easy to clean. Um, when this little thing breaks, you just, you, you just replace it. For example, my Moonblown 149, it is a piston filler, the piston broke or it is loose or something, and I cannot repair it, I will need to send it back. When you have the cartridge, what can happen is that the mouth of the cartridge may uh, crack after several uses and you just grab another new cartridge and you're ready to go. Or if you have a converter and the converter stops making that uh, vacuum, you just buy another converter and it is much, much cheaper than to have a, a repair for the pen. Uh, finally, I just want to say there is another filling system that I quite like, uh, although it's not any of those, which is this, the, the button filler. And I like the button filler because the button filler seems more sturdy than the lever filler, for example, and it is very, very, very easy to replace. Usually the bar doesn't have any problem, the button doesn't have any problem, you just need to replace the sack inside, put the little bar that compresses the sack inside again, and then the button, and the pen is ready to write again. So I think it is the most simple uh, filling system to repair. But my favorite, as I told you once again, is the cartridge converter system. And now let's go for our last topic of today. And for today, the last topic is... I forgot to write this one, so... Favorite filling system. Actually, I'm not sure if this should be the last topic or... I think it should have been the other order, but I don't... Sometimes I have some... Uh, in my outline here I had it on the opposite, uh, on the opposite uh, order, but now I changed it, so whatever, I don't think there will be a problem. So, favorite filling system, and for the final topic is... Brands or products that pay homage to their own history. And sorry if this doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, my English is very limited, as you already know. Although some of you are nice enough to tell me that it's not true that I am, that you can understand me, but I think I'm far from being a good speaker of English. So, what do I mean about this? This, is, this may be a question for you, what do you think about it? I can say this is something that I quite value. I like the pens that make or the brands that make products that remind us of the pens they that 
it's not just a reminder, they pay some homage to their own history, and I think this is a very, very interesting uh, topic, in my opinion. And so, let's start, and I will start for a brand that's not that obvious, because it's not the most well-known brand in the world, but it is a brand that I think it's very interesting, which is the Aurora. And Aurora had a model that was very, very famous, which was the Aurora 88. And then they created another model some years after. I'm not sure about the date, sorry. I didn't have the time to make the full research about every detail. But after some years, they made another pen that was the Aurora 88 Duo Kart. Nowadays, they have this Duo Kart, which is a ver um, Let me go back. The Aurora Duo Kart vintage one is very similar to the Aurora 88, but this pen has or used a cartridge filling system. This is not the original cartridge, this is a platinum cartridge that fits, but it's not the original cartridge. So it, had, it was a cartridge pen that had the same kind of uh, looks as the the Aurora 88, and if I'm not mistaken, this pen is from somewhere the 50s. Now, they released last year the yellow version, they have several colors, they have been releasing them in the past few years. They, this is the Aurora Duo Kart, a modern version that also takes cartridges, and you can see the overall structure of the pen is very similar. Both have shiny tops, a uh, simple clip, the cap here on the Vintage Duo Kart is much shorter. Then you have the colored barrel and you have a shiny end. And you have a ring with some stripes. This one has the, has the Aurora logo there, the new one doesn't. The, the proportions are different, the kind of nib, the kind of hood, of hood is the same and they both take cartridges. However, the cartridge system from Aurora changed throughout the time. But they call this Duo Kart and they call this Duo Kart and when you look at them, yes, they make sense. So I think this is a nice homage to their brand. We can say, for example, that Parker did not follow that much in this 2021 edition of the Parker 51 they did not follow that well the vintage Parker 51, although they did it quite well with the version of uh, 2002. Another brand that did this, and I think they did this, as I told you, with the, 20, with the 2002 edition of the Parker 51 was Parker, but that's not their most common thing to do. However, and it was a like an isolated exercise and now they are doing it again, but they are not honoring the, their history in the same way, I would say. But I can say they are doing that with the Parker Duofold range. So this is the Parker Duofold from the 20s, 30s. This is the big red version. And this is the big red version from a couple of years ago. I'm not sure, three years ago. It's still available for purchase. I like it a lot. And you can see they have some inspiration. These ones have these knurled thing here and there. Now it's not present anymore, but I can say that this pen emulates more the, the streamlined version of the dual fold instead of the flat top, but I don't have a streamlined version. And you can see the biggest change between these two pens was the, uh, the ball clip uh, was the evolution, the, the ball clip evolved later into an uh, arrow clip, but the arrow clip was not available when these pens were made. So, And there is also um, a logo there which is not present on the older ones. In the older ones you have a blind cap, sure, because you had the, the button. This one is a cartridge converter, so this is not a blind cap, it's just a black thing. But you can see this is really an homage. They even have the 
engraving, which is not the same, but because this is not the same engraving, but there is an older pen that has an engraving very similar to this one. There were several different engravings. And when you uncap the pens, you will see the same uh, black, not the same, but black sections in both. These ones have more rings, more decoration, and then you have big nibs in both pens, both made of gold. So they are very nice pens, and I think in this case, they really honored their vintage parts. There is another brand, but I only have the modern version, not the older version, which is Tivaldi. And Tivaldi is making a great work in creating pens that are similar. And you can see this Tivaldi. I also have a coupon that you have a discount at Tivaldi web store. This is the Tivaldi Perfecta, which is a very good pen. And this is very hard to show because the pen is it's called rich black and it's really a very, very deep black. And you can see lots of these textures there because these in the vintage version, which is very similar, used to be the turning knob to put the piston in or the... Sorry, it was not a piston filler. Um, to put the nib in or out. It was kind of... A safety pen but it was ex actually the same pen but some features here are just for decoration and the original they were working parts and I have here the book from Tivaldi and you can see many of the features are still here the clip is the most different feature I don't have the actual vintage pen but I have this modern one and this is amazing and I like to see when a brand does this they make they use the old stuff and they just work on that there is also another brand that does that work in an amazing way in my opinion and we are talking about Caveco and you know that I am a fan of Caveco you have here the vintage Caveco Dia and this is a very small pen, but you have the medallion on the top, you have the clip with the Caveco the traditional uh, uh, logo, then you have the two cap rings, and you have the the blind cap to access the the piston knob, and you have the nib section. So this is the Dia. It's written there. This is a vintage pen, but then you can get the recent Dia that is a much bigger pen because maybe it wouldn't make that sense, that much sense to make a smaller pen. And you'll have the same kind of features. You have this knurled part, you have a knurled part there, you have more golden ring, more ring, metal rings, that's a thing. You have two rings on the cap also. You have the same kind of clip you have the same knurled part there, the medallion. There is no medallion on the bottom of the vintage Caveco. And then they both have screw fit caps and you will access the nib. And it's fun because you can really understand that the pens relate themselves. So they just made the adaptations that they needed to do. The piston filler gave origin to a... a cartridge converter pen. The same thing happens with the Caveco Sport, which is one of my favorite models ever, as you know. And this is it. This is the Caveco Sport. This is a vintage, very old one, and this is a modern. And you can see they are quite similar. This one, this variation even has the same kind of guilloche pattern even on the barrel, very hard to show because it's a black pen. And, of course, the modern one is a little bigger, but don't think that is that much of a difference. But you have eight facets on the cap, the almost cylindrical barrel, the small nib, the short pen that becomes a full-sized pen when posted. The vintage one is even bigger than the newer one. So you have uh, an interesting pen that really, really respects the same 
idea of the vintage one. However, I know this one was a piston filler and this one, this is the blind cap that you can remove and use the turning knob and this one is a cartridge converter pen. So they are a little bit different, yes, but they really uh, rely on their older image. Then you have also some pens that have a little difference, like let's say the Lamy 2000. I have this one is the steel version, but think about the Macrolan version. It was released. I didn't check my dates. I think it was 1960. Um, and it has been produced since then, with no major changes. So, you may say they are making some variations on, on it, like this steel one, but you may say they are not really making an homage to a vintage model, they are just keeping the same product that they have. Yes, that is a little bit different, but still, they are still making the same product. In the case of Parker, they stopped making this kind of to do fold later they changed to this do fold and the fold disappeared completely and then it returned with a slightly different pen from this one so it it, it evolved with time um, and stopped being made sometime or as the caveco sport caveco company closed uh, in between and then it was um, reintroduced with the products inspired by the vintage ones I just want to say also that this is not an exclusive of fountain pens. You can find it on pencils also, for example. And this is something that I really enjoy. For example, in a brand that I like, you know, Caveco, you have here an older Caveco sport uh, pencil that works like this. This is an older Caveco pencil that is the match for this one. This, they, this would come in a set. So this is the match. And this is a modern one. I don't have a black one. And this one has... The, the, the LEDs are much more broader. So this is a 1.18. This is a 2 millimeters, I think. And this one is a push pencil and this one is a twist. But you can see that the design is overall the same. It didn't change much. The same octagonal shape, everything very similar. And there is actually another detail that I love about Caveco is that they still make the refills of 1.18 millimeters that are not used in any of their current products. So they are just producing they are still selling those LEDs for their older pencils. And I think that is an amazing detail in this kind of thing. They all they still respect their older products and they make refills that will fit them. Another pen, another pencil that goes into that category is the Caveco Special. This is an older Caveco Special that is we actuate it like that, but it doesn't have a lead inside, so it will not work. But you twist that and you have the lead coming out. This is the Cavex Special. This is a vintage pen, a pencil, and this is a modern pencil. And you can see, this is the current production. It is a little bit longer, but these have lots of different uh, sizes and shapes. There is also a long version of this one. This is the short. It is a very, that's why it's called Special S for short. This is a 0 0.9 millimeters and it is a push pencil. So this part is a little bit out and not quite like the vintage one that is flush because it is a twist, this is a push button, but you can clearly see where the inspiration from this one came. And again, this takes 1.2. 18 millimeter LEDs and they still make them. And because we are talking about refills, let's go for refills. For example, Parker, but that's like the Lamy 2000. Lamy 2000 still makes them. Parker still never stopped 
still makes their Parker ballpoint refills that were created for the Jotter fountain pen and they are still made and they are the, the refills that are accepted on their ballpoint pen. So this is nice to know that not fountain pens but those refills are still the same and this is a way that they honor they think their thing so I don't think for example I think Aveco does that very well with their pens Parker does not I don't think Parker based their history in honoring their older models but really into develop developing them Parker was really a pioneer in fountain pen world and they created a lot and they were just constantly evolving, not going back into the past and reviving models. Some brands did, but they are very coherent in their refills and you can see it by their ballpoints. But they also created, when they created the pen that I like a lot, the Parker 45, they created these refills. They are the super quink. This one has still these markings, which are nice. This is super quink and they fit ever sharp because Parker bought ever sharp and they have the same filling system. It fits ever sharp and Parker. Actually, they fit also Aurora and Lamy, but that's a modern thing. And it has an arrow to tell you how you should insert because this was a new th thing and people may thought it would have it would be this side but it's not it's that one so it is the super quink this was the vintage one it is a little bit distorted now but they have still the same this is a modern one it is the same the same thing this one has not those engraving those uh, things and it has a more frosted ending than this one but actually it is the same the same uh, opening you can use cartridges the same kind of cartridges in every Parker pen however at some point they created shorter pens that will only take short cartridges which are these ones but these are the same cartridge system just half the size but the opening is the same so they really created a model that worked and they kept using it the only difference came with when they made the other uh, brand of ink not the quink but the penman i'm not sure if it's written anywhere this is a an ink cartridge of Penman and it has a little step here. The shape is a little bit different but again the kind of fitting system is the same. And long video I know I told it to be shorter. Uh, when they talk about the when I talk about the cartridges I have to say that they did the same thing about Quink ink. The bottles. This is a vintage bottle of an ink that I, until I got this bottle, I didn't know they made, which is permanent turquoise ink. And they call, they say here which colors they made. Let me just show it. I know this is not the, the goal of this video, but I think this is always interesting to know. Six permanent colors for records and documents: black, blue, black, blue, turquoise, red, and green. One washable color for school and home use: royal blue. And it was available in 1 ounce, 2, 4, 20 and 40. So there were, it was available in, very, in several formats. But what I'm talking about is about the, the shape. And when we get an older, uh, a newer bottle, this is, a, this is not the most recent. This one has maybe 10 years. This one, I don't know, maybe 50 years or more. It is the same size. This may be a 1 millimeter or 2 bigger but it is the same kind of idea and when you remove the bottle this has dried ink I will revive this one day but now I still have to use some ink that I have and this is the modern one which is empty okay the label changed but 
the bottle it may be a little bit narrower yes you can see it's not that large they are aligned in this bottom part this one is a little bit shorter than this but they are the same and you can even exchange the caps from the older ones to the newer ones so they have some differences this doesn't have parker engraved here on the on the bottom and this one has you can see there parker so they are a little different this one has the parker information there about the bottle the older one didn't so they have these differences but they are the same product so it's fun that they kept doing the same uh, the same pen the sorry the same kind of bottle the same style and it is called it is still called Parker Quink of course there were some different shapes of bottles like the diamond shape and and of course like I was talking about the, uh, the Penman range there was also a, a Penman bottle which was totally different from the Quink but Again, they kept the same kind of bottle, the same kind of thing. And just to end up this video, because I'm getting tired and I am getting worried about the time to edit this video, I have here Waterman ink. This is a vintage Waterman ink. I don't know when it was made. I don't have that information. I would, like, I would love to know. Waterman's finest ink for all fountain pens and general use. Rich uniform color, free from sediment, British made. And these are some bottles that I bought some time ago. And this bottle, unfortunately, it's not the, the ink is not good. It doesn't smell very well and it's not really very intense. It has some dust. It's not a very intense blue, it's more like a grey. But I'm really tempted to put it to some safe pen and when i talk about safe pen maybe uh gin house centennial which has which has those that kind of vintage look but it is a modern pen that has and it is those chinese pens are really inexpensive so if i destroy one because of the properties of being there is a really problem but i think i'll need to use them i wanted to show you the design it has this shape that I'm not able to describe it to you, but it was made like this because you could fill the pen like that and when the pen, the ink is level is getting low, you would put like this and you have a better angle to, to put the ink and reach it in a deeper way. So this is the regular way to fill the pen and this is when the bottle is getting empty. And when you go for the current bottles, I don't know if this is the most recent one. I asked this used bottle from my father because he likes to use this color and he had this empty bottle and I asked him because it is useful for the channel. And this bottle is bigger, it takes more ink, 60 milli or 59 milliliters. This one takes 50 milliliters. You can see the size difference. This is even thicker. It's a little bit different, but and this one is more straight up, but this, the, the concept is the same. This one has water, but this one has not. It changed more than Parker Quink bottles, but it really is the same kind of bottle. And both can do this for reaching the ink on the end. They have slightly different. This one has two small facets here and it is plain there. This one has no plain facet here, it's just two little facets and then you have a plain facet here where the where it will uh, rest so actually i really really admire brands that do this and they decide that it's not all the time needed to create new stuff you can just improve and rely on the things you developed on the past and i think for me it really makes a lot of sense okay I'm tired and this is these are all the topics that I have to talk about. Please, if you want, give me your thoughts about your favorite filling system and tell me if you feel it's nice to... if you think it's nice that a brand or a 
model or something like that keeps their um, connection to the older products that they have. I think it is an interesting topic to read in the comments below. So, we reach the end of this. Thank you all for watching and I hope Friday night pen thoughts will be able to come back next Friday. Bye!